Good afternoon. I'm Ken Jenkins, Westchester Deputy County Executive. De County Executive George Latimer is out of the county for today's meeting, and certainly it's a great opportunity. Um, today is Monday, September 23rd, and today has been designated by the UN General Assembly as International Day of Sign Languages. And for that, we will have a sign language interpreter with us for our entire briefing today. So we're gonna start today with our guest from the New York School for the Deaf, our superintendent, Dr. Joseph Santini. And again, the UN General Assembly is this week and the 23rd of September is the day of international sign languages in order to raise awareness of the importance of sign language in the full realization of the human rights of people who are deaf. According to the World Federation of the Deaf, there are more than 70 million deaf people worldwide. More than 80% of them live in developing countries, so collectively they use over 300 different sign languages. Sign languages are fully fledged natural languages, structurally distinct from spoken languages. There is also international sign language, which is used by deaf people in international meetings and informally when traveling and socializing. At this time, I'm gonna ask Dr. Joseph Santini to come and join us and, and give us some additional information from International Day of Sign Languages and the work is done under School of the Deaf. He will be signing that information as well. So, Dr. Santini. Thank you. Thank you all. And a special thanks to our county executive and his team for the very kind invitation to come and speak about the International Day of Sign Languages. My name is Dr. Joseph Santini, and I am the superintendent at New York School for the Deaf, also known as Fanwood, where we have been serving the needs of deaf and hard of hearing children and their families since 1817. We are located in Westchester. We are a bilingual school where children develop excellence in American Sign Language, ASL, and also English. American Sign Language is a beautiful language that has helped deaf and hard of hearing youth thrive for centuries. Mm -hmm. Our school has been established in New York for over 200 years and has helped families thrive. And we are very proud to be part of a long history and a story in regards to history. And we are thrilled to inform you to please reach out to us if you would like to learn American Sign Language or if you become aware of a deaf or hard of hearing child that could enroll into our program. Again, we would like to thank you for joining us, the deaf community, and celebrating the power of sign language today. Thank you. We, we'd like to thank um, Dr. Joseph Santini from the New York School for the Deaf in highlighting um, the, the many, many great things that happen at the New York School for the Deaf and to be able to get more education and bring awareness to the power of American Sign Language for all of the folks here in the New York area, Westchester specifically. Thank you so much, Dr. Santini, for being with us again today. Um, today's municipal guest is going to be the mayor of the great city of Peekskill, Vivian McKenzie. Some people call her Cindy because that's how long she's been engaged and involved in the great city of Peekskill. Um, but Mayor Vivian McKenzie um, has a population in Peekskill of about 25,000 people. And at this point in time, we'll ask um, Vivian McKenzie to come up and tell us an update of all the news and great things that happen in the city of Peekskill. We know they have their downtown revitalization grant and then followed up uh, by a momentum grant. They were the first community in Westchester County to have a DRI grant and now they have additional to that, the momentum grant and there's great things happening in the city of Peekskill. Mayor McKenzie. Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins. Thank you for the opportunity to update the community on the city of Peekskill. As like other municipalities, we are winding down the summer 
getting in the last of the summer events like concerts on our beautiful waterfront, outdoor dining and live music in our downtown and restaurant row, and fun family ev events uh, throughout the city. In 23 and 2024, we as a city have worked diligently to complete some of our DRI initiatives. I can proudly say that our Pugsley Park, located in our downtown, is currently complete. The park offers beautiful open space for our residents and visitors to relax, play, view art, and attend community events. Fleischmann Pier and Park renovations have been completed with the exception of a few minor additions, but that park has now allowed our residents the most beautiful view of our waterfront. It's accessible to all, no matter what your level of mobility is. Both parks not only increase the quality of life for Peekskill, but they are economic development drivers that will help the city reach our goals to provide a city where people can live, play, work, or grow a business and attract people from all over. We are working to be the leader in Northern Westchester for workforce development. Our kitchen incubator project will help us to provide improved workforce development opportunities for individuals looking to start a new business or improve on an existing business in the culinary and food industry. We are proud of our continued success as a Northern Westchester Arts and Cultural Center. We give thanks to the county for the support and New York State with the DRI program. Both entities have allowed us to provide and showcase art from world-renowned artists and our very own Peekskill artists in our parks, on private buildings, and provided funding to improve our beautiful Paramount Theater. I encourage you all to visit Peekskill to capture this beautiful artwork. Lastly, with the dire need for housing across the country, we are proud to be a pro-housing community. We're working to provide housing for all income levels and encouraging developers to think outside of the box on projects that will not just serve their economic needs, but the housing needs of the city. As uh, the Deputy County Executive said, we were the recipients of the Momentum Fund, which is really helping us to think outside of the box as we work uh, for infrastructure. Those funds are specifically to increase infrastructure so we're able to do parking so that developers do not have to uh, bore that expense and can more economically build in our city. So we're hoping to move forward on that uh, as quickly as possible so that we can provide housing uh, to meet some of the housing needs that we all are experiencing. So I thank you very much for this opportunity and everyone have a great day. Thank you, Mayor McKenzie, for the, all the your fantastic leadership and, and the continued success for the city of Peekskill, not only, as you mentioned, with Pugsley Park, um, but certainly going right through um, Main Street in the downtown area. Um, people should always recognize that we have a tremendous um, film and back of the, uh, the back house um, work that happens in the city of Peekskill where all of that editing and, and all that other good things that happen for every movie that you see now, whether it's CGI, um, um, computer graphics um, enhanced, et cetera. There's a lot of that that happens in the city of Peekskill. Um, the housing that has been um, affordable housing, fair and affordable housing throughout the city of Peekskill, as well as market rate housing coming in um, the city of Peekskill. And the work that's being done around infrastructure, again, is a tremendous success. Some transit-oriented design that's happening in the city of Peekskill, and it is beautiful on the waterfront right before you head up on the GOAT Trail um, <laughs> to be able to move things forward. I always wanted to say GOAT Trail on a briefing, so now we got to get that done, right? But again, thank you so much, Mayor McKenzie, for all of the, the fantastic work and your tremendous leadership in the great city of Peekskill. Um, up next, we're going to have um, our Director of Economic Development, Bridget Gibbons, and the Westchester County Association Vice President, Amy Allen, come up to us and talk a little bit about the Hudson Valley Digital Innovation Conference. And again, there's so many great things that happen under Bridget Gibbons' leadership in economic development. So let's bring up at this time. Thank you, Deputy County Executive. Uh, for many years, the county has enjoyed a very constructive partnership with the Westchester County Association, a business advocacy and policy organization headed up by Mike Romita and his vice president, Amy Allen, who you're going to be hearing from in a little bit. Um, and this public-private partnership has really enabled the county to deliver specific programs that are impactful for our residents to foster a resilient, pro-growth and inclusive economy. A recent example 
example of this is our Connect Westchester initiative, which in partnership with the STEM Alliance uh, provides devices, so computers and, and Chromebooks to Westchester County residents and training to enable them to participate more fully in the digital economy. As a natural extension of that, I'm pleased to announce our upcoming Converge Conference, which will take place on October 1st at Pace University in partnership with the WCA and the STEM Alliance again. This conference will focus on regional digital infrastructure, AI, cybersecurity awareness and prevention, and much more. It's going to be an informative and empowering day, so we welcome you all and look forward to seeing you there. I would like to thank De Deputy County Executive and the County Executive for their support and our work to expand digital equity and inclusion across the county. Now I'd like to turn it over to Amy Allen, Vice President at the WCA, who will provide more information on our upcoming Converge Conference. Thank you. Thanks, Bridget, and thank you, Deputy County Executive, for the opportunity to be here. Um, the WCA is very proud to be a part of the Connect Westchester Digital Coalition. Through us, the STEM Alliance, and our other program partners, the county government has brought digital connectivity to thousands of homes. That investment means better access to job training and higher pay, paying jobs, better financial literacy, better access to health care, and better entrepreneurial skills. The more people can participate in the digital economy, the stronger the, econ the economy becomes. The county's Converge Conference will bring together stakeholders from all over the region to showcase the nexus between digital access and the new economy. You will learn how Westchester is leading with digital innovation. You will meet experts from local, state, and federal governments, as well as national think tanks like Brookings. You'll hear from businesses about how they are building out digital infrastructure to support next generation AI and smart cities. You can also see Pace University's brand new cyber range. And you will learn about the hundreds of millions of dollars being deployed here in New York to strengthen our digital backbone. So please join the county and its Connect Westchester Coalition for the Converge Conference at 8.30 a.m. on October 1st at Pace University in Pleasantville. And you can find all of the details online at westchester.org. Thank you. All right, so first, thank you, um, Amy Allen, Vice I'm Vice Chair, Vice President of the Westchester County Association um, under leadership of CEO and President Mike Ramita and the Chair of their board, Susan Fox, um, and the great leadership that they have there and Westchester Catalyst and our Westchester Economic Development, Bridget Gibbons, our Economic Development Director um, for Connect Westchester, which is coming up and make sure you get there um, on the website, westchester.org to be able to sign up for that. Um, you certainly could get through that through the Catalyst page as well. Um, but the reality is is that that kind of forward thinking and the leadership that Westchester County Association continues to show in making sure that we have digital equity and connecting everyone together is so essential and it's important. So again, we're looking forward to being part of the Hudson Valley Digital Innovation Conference um, and that's coming up on October 1st at Pace University in Pleasantville. And um, we want to give a shout out to our friend Marvin Krislov who is the president over there at Pace University as well. Um, Keep me moving forward. We have this week on Friday, um, this Friday, September 27th at 3 p.m. This weekend, we're recognizing um, a club and a group that no one wants to be part of. The Gold Star Mothers and their families. Um, Gold Star Mothers are pe mothers that have lost children um, in the course of conflict that the United States military has been um, executing across the world. So again, it is a very exclusive club that no one wants to be a part of, but we need to make sure to support our Gold Star mothers and their families. The county ceremony is this Friday, um, September 27th at 3 p.m. at the county's Memorial Walkway at the Kensico Dam Plaza. The county, um, County Executive Latimer always points out for everyone, and we'll say it again, the reason the county does its um, version and recognition for Gold Star Mothers on the Friday prior to the Sunday where the recognition is done across uh, the country 
because we want to make sure that everyone can get an opportunity to participate and support their local Gold Star families. And every community has a Gold Star family, a Gold Star mother. So we're eternally grateful to all of those who serve and are humbled by their sacrifice, especially those who have given all. But their sacrifice is not theirs alone. Their families live with this sacrifice every day. So we honor and serve those families through the work of our Veteran Service Agency and our Gold Star Mothers and Families Memorial Service is an opportunity for us to publicly express our love and support and gratitude for the families who have also made the ultimate sacrifice. So we're inviting you, County Executive Latimer, myself, and our entire team are inviting you to join us at Kensico Dam Plaza at the Memorial Walkway at 3 p.m., that's this Friday, or as always, it'll be streaming online where you can take a look from wherever you happen to be. But again, let's take that opportunity to recognize our Gold Star families. And we always wrap up when we talk about the events in the parks. So this Thursday, September 26th, at the Hilltop Hanover Farm and Environmental Center, which is in New Yorktown Heights. We are gonna to continue to have our Farm to Fable um, program, and that's from 10 to 11 a.m. on Thursday, September 26, um, at Hilltop Hanover Farm and Environmental Center. Ages three to six will explore the whimsy of the world through uh, around them through combining storytelling with hands-on activities on the farm straight from a tale. Um, registration from this class is required online, and you can pay and contribute whatever you want. So again, that, uh, that particular information can be found on the county's website, and I know it's scrolling across the bottom of the screen as well um, for the Hilltop Hanover Farm and Environmental Center Farm to Fable program 10 to 11 from, for ages 3 to 6 years old. Um, also on Thursday, September 26, we have the Cranberry Lake Preserve here in North White Plains. It's all about algae, so it's from 1 to 2.30 p.m., and you'll be able to dive into um, the world of psychology and learn all about algae's unique ecology, human uses, and more. The program will be a presentation followed by a short hike, um, so wear appropriate footwear for the short hike, and you'll be able to learn all about algae. There's no um, age limits that are on this particular program, and it is free. On Sunday, September 29th, um, we're gonna have the world famous Glen Island Park Car Show from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. The gates open at at uh, 8 a.m., registration for the cars that are gonna participate are gonna be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and the award ceremony for those cars start at 2.30 p.m. Admission and parking fees do apply for the car show at Glen Island Park, but uh, you've know, been to it in the past. It is a wonderful opportunity for those folks that have shown their classic automobiles and sometimes their brand new automobiles with the um, high-end show cars that they have around Westchester County. Again, 9 a.m. Um, to 3.30 p.m. at Glen Island Park on Sunday, September 29th. Um, and we have two more events that we want to highlight. Uh, one is at the Alfred Breed Del Bello Muscoot Farm, which is in Somers. That's the farmer's market that happens again every Sunday right through November 17th. And that is from 25 local vendors um, where they'll be able to see their, um, their goods and, and farm products right at the Alfred B. Del Bello Muscoot Farm. That's from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And you never know which officials are going to show up and maybe do some um, pulking of maple out of the trees as well. And again, that's every Sunday until November 17th. And certainly, we have our Bicycle Sundays that will continue right through October 13th. So our Bicycle Sundays are from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. where you can bike, walk, or jog the 13.1 mile loop of the Bronx River Parkway from White Plains to Yonkers. The portion of the parkway is closed to cars for the exclusive use of non-motorized bicycles and scooters as well as inline skaters, walkers, and joggers. It, again, it goes Sundays to October 13th. 
about halfway down, um, about this place where I usually stop is at the Scarsdale Farmers Market, which happens just about the same time. So take advantage of that little stop in the break. And we certainly appreciate the support of all of our sponsors and specifically the Parks Foundation, which is the group that provides the Bicycle Sundays for all of us. So again, get a great opportunity to um, participate in the nationally recognized award-winning park system. And again, um, it's an opportunity for you to enjoy the beautiful outdoors here in Westchester County on the Bronx River Reservation and take advantage of Bicycle Sundays as well as all the other things that are happening. You can get more information about what's happening in our parks by signing up for the weekly Parks e-newsletter where they also have some discounts in there as well. And you can get to that by parks.westchestergov.com. With that, I'm Ken Jenkins, I'm Deputy County Executive, and we'll be back next week on Monday for another exciting media briefing to let you know what's going on in Westchester County, have another great municipal guest. We want to thank, certainly, Dr. Joseph Santini from the New York School for the Deaf. Um, he's the superintendent of the school uh, for the International Day of Sign Languages, my good friend, the mayor of the great city of Peekskill, Vivian McKenzie, and certainly our director of economic development, Bridget Gibbons, and Westchester County Association Vice President, Amy Allen, who gave us information about the wonderful Hudson Valley Digital Innovation Conference. With that, we hope everyone has a wonderful week. Unless there's a reason for us to um, come and bring you some information because something has come up. We'll see you again next Monday at 2 p.m. and online. I'm Ken Jenkins. Have a wonderful day.